Alright everybody, this is video 4. We're going to be looking at end behavior in our limits and derivatives unit. Alright, so grab your note sheet for end behavior and uh, I don't think you'll be needing your graphing calculator for this particular one, um, but you might want to have it handy. Alright, our first one. Now end behavior is looking at the ends of our graphs and our ends of our graphs we're always referring to going as far to the right and as far to the left as possible. So I'm not worried about going up and down this time. I'm worried about what happens as we travel left and travel right. So if I were to trace this heading all the way towards positive infinity I notice that my graph levels off. It doesn't just keep going up forever, it actually kind of levels, it actually approaches an asymptote. And if I were to do the same thing on the left hand side going towards negative infinity, that's our second example, that it also levels off. In this particular case, the, le the graph actually levels off at zero in both directions. Now this is not to be confused with going to positive infinity or going to negative infinity. Let's take a look at the um, part C, D, and E, which are all related, and this is our left and our right hand limit. So this time we're coming in from the left and the right, going towards zero. So if I come in from the right hand side, and I go towards zero, I actually go to negative infinity. And if I come in from the left, going towards zero, I go towards positive infinity which means that the limit as I approach zero, because I'm one's going down and one's going up, this limit does not exist. As I, but that's different here than our end behavior. So these two involved end behavior. Because I'm looking at what happens at the ends of my graph. Let's try the next example. Okay, so if I'm approaching positive infinity, which means I'm heading towards the right side of my graph, towards positive infinity, um, my scale here has actually given me some direction as to what I should write for my answer, but I'm actually approaching negative 4. So this must be leveling off here somewhere around negative 4. Well, let's go to the other side of it. If I'm heading towards negative infinity, this one seems to be approaching positive 2. So this answer is positive 2. So these will not always be the same thing. I must have two asymptotes occurring here, one that's leading me towards a negative 4 and the other one that's leveling everything off at a positive 2. Alright, so we have a different type of graph here. Now this time as I approach positive infinity, there doesn't seem to be any leveling, in fact it seems to dive. So if I take this towards positive infinity, my graph is actually not getting close to a single number, but it's actually going towards positive infinity or negative infinity as it goes down here. Okay, had it leveled off, we would have been able to say something else, but it doesn't do that. Now let's go ahead and look at the other side. As we head towards negative infinity, oops, I wanted to grab my highlighter, towards negative infinity, it's not going towards a single number. It's not leveling off and approaching an asymptote as we had seen in the previous examples. We're actually approaching positive infinity. All right, now the next two actually say to us with some directions to fill in the box and not use positive infinity. So we need to fill in the box with a value. So where is this graph approaching positive infinity? which means as it's moving, it's going up towards positive infinity. Now we've already talked about it being, well, negative infinity, but it suggests not using that. So another place that's heading up towards positive infinity is this side that we see over here. But it's a one-sided limit, so it has to be from negative one from the left. Well, where is it heading? Another place that's heading to negative infinity is also right here, which is another one-sided limit positive one from the right. So we have two different places where things can be heading towards positive infinity or towards negative infinity. They could be from a one-sided limit as you see here or as you're using the end behavior because this is end behavior, we could be heading towards our infinity values. All right, so here's a little lesson on asymptotes. These are the horizontal asymptotes that we saved from our first video when we talked about vertical asymptotes. 
So these are horizontal asymptotes. My first example I'm going to call bottom heavy. And all that means is that the exponent is heavier in the bottom or larger. For example, 3 over x squared minus 4. I can even throw a 3x on top because it means that my bottom is much heavier. Now if we were to think about what would happen, the limit as we go towards both positive and negative infinity is going to be 0. So the limit as we approach this function, both positive infinity and negative infinity is going to equal 0. So the limit is 0. Now, the reason is, is because if I were to choose a large value, a huge value, let's say a million, in the top I would have three times a million. But in the bottom, I would have a million squared minus four. So despite the top being three million, I have now just done three million squared. So the top is pretty large, but the bottom is so gigantic. And when I take a number, any number, and I divide it by a huge number, I end up with zero, a number so close to zero. So this is going to be my limit. 0. That means that we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. It's going to level off. It's going to look like this. And it's going to approach 0 no matter which direction I'm coming or going towards. Top heavy. Top heavy is just the opposite. Top heavy is when I actually have an exponent in the numerator that's higher than the exponent in the denominator. For example, x squared over x minus 3. Now if we think about this, if I were to substitute in a very large number in the numerator, let's say 10,000, I'd have 10,000 squared divided by 10,000 minus 3. So my numerator is so gigantic and eventually, if I keep making that numerator bigger and bigger and bigger, I'm still only dividing it by x minus 3. So this one is actually going to be the limit of f of x as x approaches positive infinity and the limit of f of x as x approaches negative infinity in this particular case, if I use a large positive number squared, it's positive, divided by that positive number minus 3. So I'm in order, in other words, I get a positive divided by a positive. So that's positive, or positive infinity. However, if I use a negative infinity in here, I'm going to change colors because I think I might be talking too much here, that if I take a negative infinity and I square it, I still get a very large positive number. However, if I do negative infinity minus 3, I've got a negative number. Therefore, I've got a positive number divided by a negative number, which means negative infinity. And the reason it's still an infinity is because it's so large in the top that when you divide it by something, I'm still getting infinity. And the last example, I'm going to have the same degree such as 2x minus 3 over 3x plus 1. So for this one, my limit as we approach positive infinity or as we approach negative infinity, let's see what happens. If I put a positive in the numerator, I get 2 times infinity minus 3. And it's almost like that minus 3 doesn't even matter. If I put an infinity in the denominator, I have 3 times infinity plus 1. And the plus 1 almost doesn't even matter. So therefore, I'm going to get 3 times a very large number, 2 times a very large number, divided by 3 times a very large number, which gives me the ratio of their coefficients is what my limit's going to be. So in this case, it's 2 over 3. Well, this is the same as having my horizontal asymptote 
at y equals two thirds. It's the ratio of those coefficients. And this only works if my degree is the same. Well, the same thing's gonna happen if I use a negative infinity. Because two times negative infinity over three times negative infinity, that means my negatives will cancel out. So I'll end up still with two thirds as my ratio. So all in all here, we've got this to think, keep in mind. If it's bottom heavy, it's zero. If it's top heavy, you're gonna to have to substitute it in and decide whether it's positive or negative infinity. If it's the same degree, it's the ratio of the lead coefficients. Those are the three things you have to remember. So I'm gonna try the evens with you, and then I'm gonna leave the odds for you to show me tomorrow. For example here, I'm gonna get a different pen color so I'm not writing in red. Here I'm going to find the limit, so I'm gonna substitute in positive infinity. If I substitute in positive infinity into the numerator and then into the denominator, my denominator gets so gigantically big that this is going to go to zero because I'm going to have big over gigantic and that equals zero. Okay, number six. Once again, I'm going to have big, but this time I'm going to have a negative big over gigantic because I'm squaring it. So it didn't even matter that my big was negative because it's still going to go to zero. These were both four and six were bottom heavy. Okay, now let's go ahead and look at number eight. Number eight looks like it's top heavy. So when it's top heavy, oh wait, it's not top heavy because this bottom part, the denominator, is not in order. So if I were to rewrite it, I'd have x to the fourth minus 3x squared plus 1 over negative 3x to the fourth plus 2x squared minus 2. So in fact, this one is the same degree. So if I substitute in a negative infinity to the fourth power over negative 3 times negative infinity, to the fourth power. The only thing that really matters is my lead coefficients. So in this case, my limit is going to equal negative one-third, and that comes from my, the ratio of my lead coefficients. This one is a same degree. All right, last two examples, and I'm gonna leave the rest for you to try on your own. Um, the limit here, we're going to be looking at, I'm telling you it doesn't exist. I'm telling you that these are both top heavy. So technically my limit doesn't exist because it's going off to infinity and that's such a large place we've never gotten there. Therefore, I'm going to say we got to look to see if it's going to positive infinity or negative infinity. And we're going to do that by substituting in a positive number and a, neg and a negative number. So here, as I go towards positive infinity, I get positive infinity cubed minus positive infinity squared, so still pretty big, over infinity minus four. This one's going to positive infinity because I'm looking at the, they're both positive values up here. This one, I'm gonna have negative three plus positive infinity squared, so that seems like a positive numerator. My denominator, on the other hand, is two minus infinity, which means I'm gonna have a positive number over a negative number. Therefore, this is going to negative infinity. So you really just have to consider what the signs are going to be, whether they're positive or negative. All right, so I'm leaving for you to try uh, numbers five, seven, and nine, 11, and 13 on your own. If you have any questions, feel free to check in with each other on Schoology.